Welcome to another Femi Studio tutorial. With the release of 4.0, a lot of the basic desktop controls have changed, so it's a good excuse to record an updated version. This one's going to be much shorter because YouTube tells me that you guys have basically the attention span of a goldfish. Still, it's going to be very much hands-on, no prior knowledge of chiptune or the NES required. We're going to be uh, remaking the first few bars of the Tetris song for the original Game Boy, so that should be fun. But first, I'm just going to go over the UI and the basic control real quick for maybe three minutes, and after that, we're going to be remaking that song from scratch. Now let's go over the UI real quick. At the top, you have the toolbar, obviously. Uh, this is where you open file, copy and paste, but that's not what I'm interested in right now. What I want you to take a look at is this top right section. As I move the mouse, it's going to show you everything you can do. It's going to show you what the mouse button do. If you click at this location, it's going to show you very useful keyboard shortcuts, all that good stuff. So it's a great, great way to discover how the app works. So please keep an eye on it at all times. Right below the toolbar, we have what I call the sequencer, which is where you're going to decide which pattern plays when on, on which channel. A pattern is a short series of notes, usually a bar or two, you decide, that you may wish to repeat uh, one or more time in the song. At any given time, there's only one selected channel. The selected channel is going to change whenever I click on a row, and it's going to be in bold. To navigate around, you can press the mouse wheel. Yes, the mouse wheel is a button. Some people don't realize that. And you can just drag around once you are holding the mouse wheel. And it, rotating that mouse wheel in and out is going to zoom in and out. Right below the sequencer, you have the piano roll, obviously. This is where uh, you're going to be kind of editing the individual notes of your song. You can kind of think of it as like a more detailed view of what the sequencer is showing you. To navigate around, it's the same deal. You can press the mouse wheel and move around to pan, or you can rotate the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. In the sequencer here at the top, you're going to notice this gray rectangle. This shows you what the piano roll is actually looking at right now. So as I move, zoom in and out, you're going to see this gray rectangle change shape. So if you ever get lost and you don't know where you are, you can always find this gray rectangle and locate yourself. Finally, the panel on the right is what I call the Project Explorer, which contains all your song, all your instruments, all your sample. Uh, this is where you're going to be editing instrument. This is where you're going to be changing the tempo settings of your songs, maybe. At any given time, same rule, there's only uh, one selected instrument, and it's going to be in bold. Clicking uh, an instrument makes it the new selected one. Uh, so the rule is going to be that when you play uh, the piano here, the selected instrument is going to play on the selected channel. There you go. Very simple. So in this tutorial, we're going to be remaking a very simple, very approximate version of the few bars of the Tetris song on the original Game Boy. It's not meant to be accurate or good in any way. It's just an excuse to kind of show you the basic features of the app. The sheet music I'm going to be following is on MuseScore, so there's going to be a link in the description if you want to follow along. Here, I'm just going to press the new file button here, and we're going to start from scratch. The first thing we're going to do is to input the main melody of the song. We're going to do this on the square one channel. Here, I'm just going to create a new pattern by clicking in an empty space. And the uh, piano rolls are going to automatically navigate to this location. To create new notes, you can simply click in the piano roll anywhere. Or you can click and hold to create longer notes. By default, the, the notes that you create are snapped to the snapping precision, which is currently set to one beat. Right now, uh, if I want to set it to a shorter value and create shorter notes, there you go. Or I can disable snapping entirely to create notes however I want. To delete notes or pattern, you can simply double click. If you want to go slightly faster, you can also shift click. And here, I'm just going to do undo everything we just did. That was just an example, and I'm just going to do a bunch of control Z. Besides sticking with the mouse, there is another way we can go about entering this melody. We can use what's called recording mode, which is toggled by pressing the record button in the toolbar. When enabled, it will record and draw all the notes in the piano roll that we play, either using the piano here, or using the MIDI keyboard that's next to me, or using QWERTY keyboard input, using the keys of the, of the PC keyboard. When we activate it, you're going to notice a few things turn red. Obviously, the, the record button turned red, but more specifically, the seek bar turned red. Uh, this is kind of telling you where the next note is going to be recorded. Also, the snapping magnet that we just discussed turned red. What this means is that the, the durations of the notes that uh, are going to be recorded 
will depend on the snapping that you set here. Keep in mind, this is not a real-time recording. This is a note-by-note -note recording. So here at a quarter beat, which is a 16 note, or if I want to record entire beats, there you go. I record longer notes. Uh, you can press backspace to just go back and delete, or if for some reason you don't want to record a note at a specific location, you can just press tab and uh, and go ahead like this. So I can do record, tab, record, tab, to just kind of skip ahead and not record anything. Again, here I'm just going to be undoing all of this and do a bunch of control of these. So here, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set my snapping to half a beat, which is an eight note, which is what we want. Now let me input the melody of Tetris real quick using my MIDI keyboard. If you don't have one, you can simply click to draw like I showed you earlier. Or you can use the QWERTY keyboard input, which uh, the notes are displayed on the, on the piano. All right, so I'll be quiet for a moment while I'm recording this. All right, I'm just going to turn off recording mode now that I'm done. So as you saw, uh, I skipped ahead a few times because there are some notes that should have been uh, quarter notes, but I didn't want to keep changing my snapping precision back and forth, so I just skipped ahead for those. So I'm just going to resize those now that I'm done. Here, I'm just going to create a selection by right-clicking and dragging. I'm going to select the entire thing, and I'm going to be resizing one of those notes, any of them, doesn't matter. And because they are inside the selection, they're all going to be resized. There you go. Now you may be asking why uh, didn't the other notes resize? Well, keep in mind, the NES channels are monophonic. They always get interrupted by the next note, so they don't really have any space to grow. So only when there was enough space, I was able to, to stretch those notes. Uh, let's listen to the melody. I'm going to clear the selection by pressing Escape, and I'm going to do Shift Space to play from the beginning. So if you're like me, you probably remember this song being quite a bit faster. Here we're going to head up to the Project Explorer, and we're going to click the little gear icon next to our song here. Or alternatively, you can right-click and select Song Tempo Properties. So here I'm going to set the BPM to 128, or as close as I can get, 128.6. While we're in this menu, we might as well make the song shorter. Uh, the song uh, length is uh, the number of patterns uh, we want in our song. We're only going to be redoing the the first four bars, so I'm going to set that to four. Might as well give the song a proper name and maybe a nicer color, whatever your favorite color is. And I'm going to be using the default value here. It is asking me a question here. Let's give this a listen. All right, one thing I want you to pay attention to is those notes at the end. Do you notice how we can't hear the distinctions between the, those last two A's? This is just due to the fact that right now we're just using that kind of default uh, instrument one that was creating for us. We're going to be revisiting this very soon, so in the meantime, just put a bit in it. Now for the bass, we will be using the triangle channel, which is a very common thing to do on the NES. Here, uh, the notes I need to enter are much more simple, so I'm just going to draw it by hand. I'm also going to just do the first bar, and then we're going to be using copy-paste for uh, the rest. Basically, it's just an excuse to kind of show you how copy place works. Here, the bass is just going to be playing octaves. Very, very simple. So here I'm heading to the triangle channel and I'm just going to be entering eight notes again. So my snapping is set to half a beat. Let's start. There you go. Very simple. Now let's give this a listen. All right, cl close enough. Now we're just going to be selecting this, this uh, one bar that we did and just copy-pasting it and transposing it. To create a selection, I can just right-click either in the header or in the background here, like we saw earlier. I'm just going to do Control c and I'm going to be moving my selection here. Where we're going to be pasting is not uh, where this yellow bar is. This, this is just where the song is playing. The, the pasting action is going to be where the new selection starts. So I do Control v here. And here to transpose, I can use uh, a few different ways. I can uh, either drag like this to go down, 
or I could be uh, using the arrow keys to move things up and down, or at control arrows, which is going to be moving by an entire octave every time. So here I'm moving all of this to an A. Another way of duplicating notes is going to be clicking and dragging to move them, but hold control while you're dragging. So it's going to be duplicating while you're moving uh, stuff around. So here I'm going to be going to an F sharp, I believe, and then uh, back to an A. So I'm just going to be pasting this one. Let's give this a listen. This is completely a mistake. It's supposed to be a G sharp. So I'm not sure what happened there. Now let's go back and try to create a better instrument for our melody. As mentioned earlier, instrument are edited in the Project Explorer. Right now, we just have the kind of default instrument one that Pami Studio created for us. Let's add a new one by uh, pressing the little plus sign in the instrument section. Let's take the time to give our new instrument a, a real name. So you can change the color and the name either by clicking the gear icon or selecting instrument properties. So this one's going to be called lead. Let's make it green. Don't forget, again, just a reminder, you can kind of right click on basically anything. There are so many options hidden anywhere. Uh, we haven't even discussed what happens, for example, when you right click on a note or when you right click on a pattern, for example, there's tons of stuff everywhere. So please, please explore and learn the app by right clicking everywhere. All right. So the four little icons next to an instrument represent uh, the envelopes that that instrument has or may have. An envelope is just something that can change over time. So like the, the pitch or volume or things like that. So uh, right now, for example, uh, if I click on the little speaker icon here, it's going to open it up in the piano roll. So now the piano roll is kind of in uh, instrument editing mode, if you want. So right now what you see is the volume is just a big value 15, which is the maximum volume. What we can do, for example, we can make this uh, this envelope longer and we can actually draw something in there. So when we play this instrument, you can see that every time I play a new note, it starts and it goes from left to right kind of really quick. Each of those columns represent a frame on the NES, which is 1 60th of a second. So we can we can do a lot of things with this. I'm not going to cover everything here, but the, there are things, uh, for example, you can set loop points and release points to kind of create tack and releases. And you can also uh, edit the pitch, for example, if you want to create some kind of vibrato. There you go. It's a really powerful tool, but we're not going to be using any of that today. We're just going to be playing with the volume here. So here, the instrument I'm going to be uh, creating is very simple. I'm just going to go from 15, which is the maximum volume, to about halfway uh, 8, for example, and that's going to be our instrument. There you go. Actually, that's not true. Another parameter we can change is the duty cycle, which is this kind of little square waveform here, the first icon. The duty cycle affects the kind of uh, the shape of the square wave that we're going to have. So here we're just going to set it to two. We're not going to be uh, changing it over time. We're just going to use a fixed value. But two is going to create that kind of perfect square wave that we, uh, we're used to. There you go. Sounds a lot more like a, like a Game Boy now. Now, if we go back to the Project Explorer, we can see that the two envelopes that we actually set values in are now lit up. Now, let's go back and replace that default instrument that we've been using this whole time. Uh, let's replace it from our the melody. So here, I'm just going to go on the square channel and basically select everything. And I'm just going to create our new lead instrument and simply drag it over the selection. And there you go. We've now replaced the instrument. Now, if you notice, the default instrument one now is only being used by the bass now, so we might as well uh, change its name and call it bass. And I like to make my bass brown because it's easy to remember. All right, let's give this a listen now. So did you notice how the, the little issue that we discussed earlier is now fixed? We can now hear the distinction between these two notes because every time a new note plays, the volume envelope starts from the beginning and starts decaying. So now there's that there's actual volume variation. We can now hear the distinction between these two notes. Problem solved. Now for the drums, we're going to be using the noise channel. The noise channel uh, simply consists of uh, 16 different 
kind of noise tone that repeats over the entire piano. So they don't really correspond to any kind of real note. So just, just go back here and uh, find a sound that you like and just use it. I'm not especially good at creating drum instruments, so bear with me. Check out the demo songs for much, much better drum sounds. Also, the drums in the original song were terrible to begin with, so there's just no point of <laughs> overdoing it. So here, uh, again, we're going to be heading over to the uh, Project Explorer and creating a new instrument. We're going to be calling this one uh, drums, because why not? And it's going to be very, very simple this time. We're just going to be editing the volume envelope and we're just going to start with maximum volume and we're going to quickly go to zero. So I'm going to be doing like 10 and 5 and then zero. And there you go. We'll try to find a note that we like to make a, something that sounds kind of like a snare. So here I'm just creating a new pattern. I'm on the noise channel. I'm going to snap my, leave my snapping to half beat, which is an eight note if you do some, some mental math. And here I'm just going to play a C5 uh, of the upbeat of every note. Very simple. And for the third beat, I'm just going to play uh, the snare twice to just give it a little bit of variation. There you go. Not great, but, you know, recognizable. So since this is going to be our, our drum beat for the entire song, uh, we're not going to be using copy paste here. We're going to do something different. Patterns, uh, we can copy patterns, but we uh, can also instantiate pattern. An instance of a pattern is a copy that's kind of linked to the original. So I can move a pattern by just dragging it like this, but if I hold control while I'm dragging, you're going to see that it shows a link icon. The link icon means that it's creating an instance of that pattern. And you can see that it has the same name and the same color, and if I set a name, to the pattern, which you should really do uh, to keep things organized. I'm not going to do it here. And I change the color. You can see that it changes all of them. And in the piano roll, if I edit one of them, they're all getting modified at the same time. So they are really just one pattern, just repeated four times. Now let's give this a listen to see our progress. Now let's add a few notes on the square channel too, to create some kind of harmony. Here I'm going to head over to the square two channel and create a new pattern. But you'll notice I cannot see square one. It would be nice to kind of see it, at least to enter harmonies at the right time and know that I'm correctly aligned. But Themis2 is, is a very much a, a channel per channel editing software. But there is a way. If you click on the little eye icon here next to square one, you're going to see that it lights up. What it's going to do is going to show me kind of a see-through, like a very dim version of square one, no matter which channel I am on. So. We can kind of use this to align ourselves to the main melody and enter our harmonies, which I'm going to be doing right now. So I'm going to be selecting our lead instrument here, and I'm going to try to enter the harmonies correctly. All right, hopefully I get it right. Let's give this a listen. All right, pretty good. My only complaint is that I think it's too loud. So we saw earlier we can adjust the volume per instrument, but I think here creating a, an entirely new instrument just for harmonies would be completely overkill. So what we can do is that we can use the effects panel to kind of affect some effects kind of globally, uh, regardless of the instrument. So here I'm going to press a little triangle here to expand the effects panel. So as you can see here, there's a bunch of effects that we can change, but right now we're just interested in the volume. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to be zooming at the beginning of the song and I'm going to be setting a volume of eight. Eight is about halfway, maximum volume is 15. So it should sound a little bit better. Let's give this a listen. All right, that's our song. Now I'm just going to take a couple minutes to kind of create really quick a second version of the song, but this time I will be using DPCM samples for the drum. It's not going to sound good in any way. I just want to be sure to touch on, on all five of the NES channels in this tutorial. So DPCM samples are very low quality samples that the NES supports. They are usually good enough for drums and bass, but not much else unless you're like a chiptune god. First thing we're going to do is duplicate our song because we, we want to keep this version uh, for later. So you can right click on a song and do duplicate. 
And we're going to be calling this one Tetris DPCM and give this a different color just to know what we're doing. So in this second version, I'm going to be deleting everything we did on the noise channel. To create a square selection in the sequencer, you can just right click and just drag like this. And I'm selecting all of our drum patterns and pressing delete. Next thing we need to do is to load up some samples in the Project Explorer. There, as you can see, there's a DPCM sample section here. By pressing the little folder icon, it's going to ask you to open some files. For samples, you can load WAV files, which you should be familiar with, or DMC files. DMC files are a little bit more specific to the NES community, but you can convert from one to the other using Family Studio. I'll put a link in the description for the two DMC files that I'm using right now. I believe they are from Gradius 2 or Castlevania 2, I don't remember. So here I'm just going to open both of them. There's a kick drum and a snare. So here you can see they are loaded in our Project Explorer. I can listen to them by pressing the play button. Cool. As you can see, they don't sound really good, but they're sort of recognizable. The DPCM uh, sample editor in Family Studio is actually super powerful. If you click on the little waveform icon in Project Explorer, you can actually uh, change the volume. You can do a bunch of stuff here, uh, edit the waveform. But we're not going to be doing any of that. There's also a bunch of parameters here if you want to kind of adjust the pitch and do all kinds of uh, funky stuff. But here we're not going to do any of that. The next thing we need to do before we can use our samples is that we uh, need to assign those to keys of the piano. Here uh, in the Project Check Explorer, there is this DPCM instrument that's that has been there since the beginning. You cannot delete it. You cannot rename it. It's always there. It's always great and at the top. But if we click on this little uh, waveform icon next to it, it's going to bring up a different view in the piano roll where you can assign samples to keys of the piano. So here I'm going to do something uh, really simple. I'm going to be uh, dragging my bass drum to C and my snare to D. So, so I'm going to be able to use those using the key C and D respectively. I'm going to head over to the DPCM channel and I'm going to be sure that the DPCM's instrument is selected and I'm going to be entering my uh, drum here. Again, I'm going to be doing kind of the same uh, drum pattern that we've been doing before. And I'm going to keep those two uh, snare hit on the third upbeat. And just like we did before, I'm going to be created instances of that for the rest of the song. Let's give this a listen. Now, what should we do with our song? I mean, one thing to do is uh, maybe to export it as an MP3 or WAV or something like that. So the export menu is in the uh, on this little file with an arrow here. So there are tons of format. Uh, I'm not going to cover any of them. Actually, the only one I'm going to cover is video export because I think it's very visual for this, uh, this tutorial. I'm going to be exporting the original version, which is my favorite. I'm not going to be exporting the DPCM channel, and I'm going to leave pretty much uh, all of the other options to default. It's going to take a few seconds to render, depending on the duration of the song. Let's see when it's done. There you go. Looks pretty cool, huh? All right, congratulations for making it all the way to the end of this very short tutorial. Uh, to learn more, check out the documentation, the demo songs, or come see us on Discord if you have any questions. As I said earlier, uh, we only use a tiny fraction of the app, so there's much, much more to learn. Anyway, good luck in your chiptune career. I'll see you soon.